The grace of Christ never fades. Welcome to our very snowy Thursday afternoon devotion. Um, our title page was so much more accurate today than it has been of the big flakes coming down. And I'm hoping this finds you all warm and safe and taking time to do some spiritual discipline, some praying, some reading, some listening to some uplifting music. So today, as we continue our Epiphany series of Unchanged. As we look at this Sunday's theme of Christ's power never fades. We are in the, the Gospel of Mark, looking at some of Jesus' first interactions with the community around him. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, where we pick up is yesterday Jesus went to Capernaum and he entered the synagogue and a man with an unclean spirit came in and challenged him, and Jesus told the spirit to leave, to be silent, and that worked. The spirit left the man. And then we pick up from there. Everyone in the synagogue was all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once... The fame of Jesus began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So our story concludes with the testimony of people around him. The people there in that synagogue that heard him expound on whatever the gospel was, teaching in a new way. Now for us, it can seem hard to think that there was an old way of preaching, and now a new way of preaching that would have been so dramatic. From what we know of historical Jewish teachings from that era of the synagogue, they basically took the Torah, the Old Testament, for what we know, plus other learnings, and the preaching time really was a time of instruction, a time of talking about the laws how to be cleansed, what it was that God had done for the people of Israel and that they were the chosen people. There wasn't a lot of, this is what you shall do. This is what you must do. There wasn't a lot of authority put into it. It was really left up to the people to discern themselves, to determine where their standing with God was and to make the corrections according to what they had been taught. So it was not a lot of, Authority. I mean, the people said it right there. They had been used to being just kind of informed and then left to make their own decisions. And it was believed that the decisions you made were part of that decision. And part of that comes from the fact that in the Jewish tradition, there's a real divide as to what the afterlife is like. They were split as to whether there was an afterlife or whether your time here on earth was what God gifted you with, and that was it. And then, of course, there was another set that believed that when the Messiah came, that there would be a, a, a reconnection, a rejoining, a rebirth of all good, faithful people of Israel, and the new kingdom would then start over. So with that kind of attitude, that kind of theology, it would have been easy to believe that the decisions you made and the life that you led was pretty much yours to decide with the guidance of the rabbis. And so when Jesus showed up, and we don't know what he taught that day, but it was enough to be radical. It was enough to catch the attention and to cause gossip, for lack of a better word, so that Jesus' claim as a preacher went far and wide. I'm sure Jesus took a lot of the grayness out of the preaching in the synagogue and put it a little bit into more of a black and white decision. He basically let them know, and we know this from the Sermon on the Mount, that what are you supposed to do? Feed the hungry. 
Visit the imprisoned. Visit the sick. The meek shall inherit the earth. Pray for your enemies. Those were all very decisive, authoritative preaching and understandings that would have been before left up to an individual if they wanted to do it. And now Jesus is telling them that as part of the kingdom of God, this is what you need to do. And he came so clear as the, that we preach on often that the number one commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, mind, and soul. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. That is a pretty authoritative, that that is what you are supposed to do. So that is where we're, we're looking at today and what I'll be looking at Sunday for that time of understanding what authority means. So with that, as we get into our uh, coronavirus update, Anne has some good news, bad news. If you hear that sound in the background, that's our automatic vacuum. We have a robot vacuum, and so... I don't think they can hear it, but that's okay. Okay, I can hear it, so it's kind of distracting me. <coughs> Anyhow, uh, regarding the COVID-19 numbers, we are at, as we were yesterday, 104 million, 104.5 million. We had about another 500 cases in the world, 500,000 cases in the world, uh, 26.5 million in the United States, and 322,527 in Iowa. That's about another 1,000 in Iowa, not quite. But the news, the big news, is the deaths continue to be quite high. 2.2 uh, million in the world, 451,000 in the United States. We crossed that 450,000 mark like I thought we might. And in Iowa, we crossed the 5,000. We are now 5,033 people who have died. That's another 58 deaths since yesterday. Um, and I was reading that in the last three months, the deaths in Iowa, how would I put this? 60% of the deaths in Iowa have happened in the last three months. So that's pretty... Yes, the third, the third wave was really huge. Yeah. But we continue in uh, Muscatine and Cedar Counties to, to be under 10 a day, 10 cases a day. We had seven in Muscatine and five in Cedar County yesterday, which puts our um, averages for two weeks, set Muscatine to 7%, and Cedar a little bit higher today at 9%. So the good news of that is that, uh, like we've said, that that does allow us to uh, resume our in-person, uh, mass socially distanced uh, worship services. I'm going to throw a note in now, though, that because of the five to seven inches of snow they're predicting, and the fact that on Sunday it's supposed to be zero with a wind chill of negative 30 or 40, wow. you might decide that <laughs> even though you have the option of coming and joining me in the sanctuary, you might actually enjoy watching it uh, either live streamed or the pre-broadcast and staying warm. And I will fully understand if I'm basically the only one in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. You will not hurt my feelings if you are staying warm because uh, it will be bitterly cold and uh, probably slippery. And so basically stay safe. One of the things that I had heard is that for the first time in three months, basically, since November, first part of November, the number of daily cases has dropped back down, uh, still 100,000 a day, roughly, of new cases in the United States. But we're back to right before the third wave. So that's not, that, a, that great, that's not a great level, high. but it's a better, it, it yeah. realizes. And so deaths will continue because, of course, they're the last part of the third wave to crash on the shore. So keep all of those people in your prayers. As we come into our prayer time, we do have a COVID prayer request. Um, Sandy Cracklio had put in a prayer request for uh, Geraldine Pedersen's son, Dennis Street, it has COVID-19, is in Rock Island Trinity Hospital uh, for that. So keep Dennis and the family, and of course, um, Geraldine and, and Sandy and uh, Carol, the sisters, uh, in your prayers and the whole family as they uh, pray for and care for uh, Dennis and the doctors that are taking care of him. Of course, during this snow, we want to keep all of the snow drivers or snowplow drivers and uh, people out there shoveling to, to be safe, to take it easy. Um, this is a time that we'd hate to see other accidents increase also from uh, over strenuous activities or uh, automobile accidents. I know there is no school today, so it'll be interesting to see how fast this uploads with everybody at home um, on the internet. We may have a problem. We may have a problem. 
Although you'll already know that by the time you're watching this, I guess. <laughs> so continue to keep in your prayers, Diane uh, Budding, and she continues her um, struggle and her path with uh, one of our lights just fell, yeah. if you notice the change, but that's okay. Um, as we continue to pray for her and Dwayne and the boys as they continue their progress through uh, their treatments, and of course, all those that are dealing with chemotherapy and radiation and recovering from bumps and bruises. So with all of that, let us now take this time to come together in prayer, the original wireless connection. Lord, today, we come to you asking for your grace, asking for your peace, asking for your power to wash over us as we sit isolated and separated in our homes with the snow swirling around us, that you may warm our hearts, prepare our souls, ready us to, to be your disciples. Lord, today, about all we can do is pray. But we know that that is one of the things that you told us to do continuously, to stay in contact with you. So Lord, hear our hearts. Help us to feel connected. Be with those concerns that are upon us. To be with Dennis and the family. To be with Bruce Walker and his family as they remember and mourn the memory of John. Be with Diane as she continues her process and procedures. Along with Wayne and the boys. Lord, be with those that are in our congregation that are dealing with health issues, cancer, tumors, bumps, bruises, broken hearts, minds that aren't working quite right, or souls that are hurting. Lord, we ask that you be with all those that have to work today, that are on the roads, clearing them for us for tomorrow, for those that have to patrol our streets and put out our fires, those that have to answer medical emergencies. Watch over them and protect them in the midst of the slipperiness and the cold, in the midst of the COVID. Lord, be with those that have to trudge their way out to restaurants and grocery stores and other areas of business in the midst of all of this to keep them safe. Lord, be with those that are working to solve this pandemic, to end it, to get us back to a place of outgoing, outreach, evangelism. Help us to be what it needs, what we need to be for you in this time and in this place. So Lord, pour out your power upon us, for we know it never fades. We may doubt, we may wonder, but we're often astounded at when it comes rushing back over us. So Lord, today, watch over us, lift us up, Help us to be your voice, your hand, and your feet to the least and the lost, to those that need a phone call, to those that need some encouragement. Lord, be with us as we continue to strive to be your modern-day disciples. Let us take your authority and go into the world to speak truth to power, mercy to violence, peace to war. Let us be people of action, not just reaction. So Lord, be with us, watch over us, help us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this next couple of days, stay warm, stay safe. Sunday, you will be able to, if you out and about, and come to the church at, I would say don't come any earlier than 10.05, 10.10, because there's not going to be a lot to do, not a lot of talking. Um, we may lose the other light here in a minute, it just moved. But uh, there will be a protocol, you can check that out in the comments section to uh, see what it is, how to come in the south door, check in, make sure you wear a mask, distancely seating, uh, there won't be any music or uh, liturgy, but there will be communion. Or you can join us live streamed on Facebook of that service in the sanctuary or the pre-broadcast um, on YouTube. Now, if you want to take communion, have your juice and bread ready, and you'll need to watch Facebook because that will be the live stream with the blessing and the instructions. And then, of course, you can always watch 
at 7 o'clock, the pre-produced service. At 1 o'clock will be our Sunday school lesson. It will be the last one of this epiphany season. I will be taking the 10th off of Sunday school in order to prepare the packets and all the stuff that's going out for Lent so that everybody has that for um, Ash Wednesday and on to do those activities. So with all of that, remember that God loves you and I love you and there is nothing you can do about it. Peace be with you. Let us be thankful that the grace and the power of Christ never fades.